Louis, you've been doing nothing all week, haven't you? Are you planning on staying home and sitting on your butt and wasting space today too? What are you talking about? I've actually been pretty busy this week. Just because you think I'm doing nothing doesn't mean that I'm lazying around doing nothing all day. Like I said, I've been keeping myself busy. I work hard every day, just like everyone else. Why do you care what I'm doing throughout the day anyway? It's not like I'm bothering anyone. I keep to myself and do my own thing. You are the biggest liar I've ever met. Is that what you call working? I know you're just clicking away at your stupid games day after day. If you think anyone is going to pay you to play games all day, then I think you need a serious wake-up call. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. You sure love to run your mouth. Yeah, I like to play games. Give me a break. I don't bash any of your hobbies, do I? I'm not just goofing off all day playing games. If I did, I don't think I would be able to afford to pay bills and everything else I need to live. I've told you so many times already that my job is remote. I don't understand why that's so hard to understand. There's plenty of people working from home now that it's become more and more popular. I don't know why I'm bothering trying to explain it to you again. Maybe you should try to find a job working from home and you will know what it's like. It's not that hard to comprehend. That's just the kind of nonsense and lies I would expect to hear from a shut-in. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Did you practice all of that beforehand? Who would believe any of that? Whether you believe it or not, it's the truth. I don't know why you insist on fighting me on this. Sure, whatever you say. Maybe, rather than coming up with excuses, you should start making yourself useful. I think you need to learn some responsibility. You hardly take care of anything around the house but yourself. You need to move out and get your own place. A fresh start, you know, and start figuring your own life out. Are you nuts? <laughs> I'm perfectly comfortable doing what I am right now. I'm doing great, actually. Why in the world would I move out? I'm more than happy to stay where I am. I'd rather not change anything if I can help it. Well, maybe it's time for a change or two, because it was really what helped me out. I'm going to need to move back in. Your place isn't big enough for all of us to be staying there. So help your sister out a bit for once. What? Why would you be moving back home? What happened? And why is this only coming up right now? Why didn't you tell me about this before? What do you mean move in anyways? Is it just like a short visit? Or what are you planning exactly? No, unfortunately, it won't be just a short visit. Not actually sure how long I need to stay there. Maybe indefinitely. I haven't planned that far ahead. My husband and I got a divorce, so I need somewhere to stay till I figure out what the next move is. I'll be taking my children with me, of course. I wouldn't leave them with him. It'll be easy for me to manage at the house. Plus, it's familiar and comforting. It will really help me out. You got divorced? I thought everything was going well. How would you go from that to a divorce in such a short time? Because unfortunately, things don't always work out how you want them to. So, it'd be really great if you move out and let me and the kids have somewhere nice that has enough space for us. I don't really expect us all to cram together with you there too, do you? It's totally not feasible. Hang on, don't you think that's a little bit unfair? Why do I need to change all of my plans all of a sudden? I'm sorry that things didn't work out with you and your husband, but how do you expect me to just suddenly accommodate for all of this? Is there really nowhere else that you can stay while you figure things out? And how much space do you actually need anyway? Why? Well, I'm the oldest. Don't I have more of a right than you do to be in the house? Besides, if I'm there working and raising my children, I don't have a moment to spare on my lazy brother who thinks he can just bum around all day. Taking care of my children and myself on my own is difficult enough. You would be a bad influence on my kids too. I don't want them to get any ideas that they can live like you in the future. Don't you think you've been staying there for long enough? You need to be a bit more self-reliant. Think of how exciting it could be to start something new for yourself. I don't know what you mean about being self-reliant. 
It's not like I don't do anything. It seems like you're just trying to come up with reasons to get me to move out. Since mom and dad passed away, the house was put in my name because I've taken care of it and everything they left behind. Don't you remember the conversation we had after mom's funeral? You pulled that I'm the oldest card back then too. You said you were too busy to worry about figuring out what to do with all their things and left it to me to figure it out. Not only that, but when we were dividing up assets that dad left to us in his will, you took the easy way out too. You refused to take anything that wasn't cash or an immediately liquefiable asset. I was left to figure out what to do with the rest. You didn't forget about that, did you? That's why I ended up with the house in the first place, because you wanted the easier option. So now you've changed your tune all of a sudden because you're in a tight spot. Is that it? What happened to all the money you took off with? After all of your protesting to have things your way, now you want to claim ownership over mom and dad's house? Am I missing something here? This doesn't make any sense to me, and if I can be blunt, I think you're not being honest with me about this whole situation. What does it make sense? I told you that I'm in a difficult situation and I need this right now. There's nothing more to it than that. Maybe you don't understand because you're young and not as experienced as I am, but I'm telling you that I don't have any other options right now. Besides, I can't even begin to imagine the state of mom and dad's per house since you've been living there. I've much better equipped to take care of your house and make sure that it's in perfect condition. Mom or dad are probably rolling in their graves knowing you've been letting their house fall apart while you screw around playing games all day. I'm sure they will be able to rest easy when it, it's in good hands. Why do you keep trying to make excuses and justifications for this? Because you think that you can cling to your comfortable, easy life as a slacker and slide right on through life while I'm struggling? Mom and Dad wouldn't want this for either of us. You are sorely mistaken if you think you can live the rest of your life playing games every single day. And the inheritance isn't something that lasts forever, you should know that. Will you please stop calling me a slacker? I've told you time and time again that I'm working a normal job. Working a normal job and making plenty of money to take care of myself in this house. Stop making me explain myself to you. And I didn't even get that much from mom and dad to begin with. Not nearly as much as you came out with. I never gave you a hard time about any of that either. Why do you keep on lying to your own sister? I get so tired of your lies and make up stories sometimes. Will you stop trying to take the easy way out every single time something comes up? You know, you aren't a child anymore. Besides, I already told you that this is something that would benefit you as well. Why can't you see things from my perspective? How can you grow as a person and get out there and make something of yourself when you keep dragging your feet? Are you serious you're going to let your sister and nieces suffer because you want to keep playing around every single day? I can't believe how selfish you're being. Especially when I'm in such a difficult position. I ought to go over there and smash all your stupid games and throw all of your garbage on the street. After everything I've done for you as a sister too. You seriously need a reality check. Okay, okay. Calm down, Deborah. I get it. And over text, you're still one of the most terrifying people to talk to. I don't want you to come here in a rampage. I can't even imagine what you would do. I need my computer for work and I'd rather keep it in one piece if I can help it. I guess you really aren't going to give me much of a choice. So it looks like I'll need to start packing up my things. So does this mean you're going to help me out with something later on when I need it? Or am I doing this purely out of goodwill? I'm not so sure about that. It might be a waste to put too much effort into helping out a slacker like you. Anyway, I'm sure you'll be fine. We don't need to start worrying about hypotheticals and what ifs. Just be ready for me when I arrive. Remember, this isn't just for me. This will be great for you too. I'll make sure our parents' house is taken care of. Louis, will you pick up the phone already? Why aren't you answering my phone calls? 
Do you realize how many times I've been trying to get in touch with you? How busy could you possibly be that you can't answer your phone? Or are you just ignoring your sister? Is that it? Hello? Answer me. You can't treat me like this. Ah, sorry to keep you waiting. I didn't have my phone on me. And I was caught up in this game. I didn't even realize my phone was going off just now. You know how it is, right? <laughs> You're such a bad liar. You were ignoring me. Why are you ignoring your sister? I've been trying to get a hold of you for almost a month now. Are you going to try to tell me you've been caught up in a game for the past several weeks? I would almost believe your ridiculous lies considering you're still such a lazy shut-in. And where exactly are you playing all these games? What couch have you crawled on to bum off now? Or are you just homeless now because you can't work? And stop with all of your annoying games. I'm tired of your awful lies. As always, it seems like you're living in a strange, warped reality. You seriously somehow still believe that I'm not employed and just getting by with nothing? <laughs> Does that really make sense to you? I guess your delusions have always been your specialty. If I was actually homeless, how would I be talking to you on a cell phone right now? Where would I be charging it? Or how would I even be paying for the service? I'm living in a condo that I purchased a while back and have since moved into. I've gotta say, it's quite nice. You were quite right about one thing though. I have been ignoring you intentionally. <laughs> I told you not to lie. Do you really think I'm gonna believe that? How in the world could you afford a condo when you're such a lazy bum? I bet you're sitting in a coffee shop right now and just stealing the Wi-Fi. Oh, come on. Give me a break. You have to be in denial if you think that's the case. No matter how many times I try to tell you, you don't want to accept that I'm not actually unemployed. But you'll continue to live in your strange reality of things you choose to believe. So what is it? What do you want? I'm sure you didn't just call and message numerous times to ask me about where I'm living, right? What's the problem now? You use your head for once. I already told you the problem when I was trying to get a hold of you. It's all of the utility bills. I can't use electricity or gas because apparently they've been turned off. Now, as of today, the water isn't coming on either. Oh, you know what? Now that you mention it, I think I do remember that you'd left a voicemail where you mentioned something like that. It was such a long voicemail, I only picked up on bits and pieces. <laughs> so what? Now the water isn't running too, so you're telling me about it? What a mess you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Is this a joke to you? It's not funny. Why are all of my utilities being turned off? What's going on? Did you do something? Why do you think that I would have anything to do with this? Maybe your utilities were turned off because you didn't pay for them? Did you ever consider that? They absolutely should have been paid. What are you talking about? If you paid them, they shouldn't have been shut off. Why should I have to pay them? What do you mean? I'm not paying the utilities. I'm not living there. So why would I? No, I'm not talking about you. All of the utilities should be being paid automatically from the account left to us with all the money from mom and dad. I have no idea what you're talking about, Deborah. What money? Why aren't you keeping a better track of your finances? I don't think there's anything left in that account, right? I'm pretty sure it's all gone now. What do you mean gone? How could it be all be gone already? That doesn't make any sense. What little money was left to me in all those assets that were distributed between us is gone. I don't know what you did with yours, but you do realize that the majority of the money that was left behind was used up before we got what was left, right? Mom and Dad had been staying in a nursing home not long before they passed away. It was too difficult for them to get around the house and up and down the stairs. Nursing homes aren't cheap and neither are funeral costs. Most of the money they had saved up and left to us needed to cover all of those costs. Who do you think was going to pay for them? Maybe you didn't realize that not everything in life will just handle itself. To be honest, we were lucky we were left with what money we got. Well, if all of their money is gone, 
Then how have you managed to get by all this time? You don't do anything. I thought you'd be living off all of the inheritance all this time. I figured all the bills were just being directly pulled from their account. The fact that you keep living by these assumptions is finally starting to have repercussions. I have been living off of my own income. You know, the money I get for my job. Do you finally believe me now that I've been working all this time? I'm not the slacker you keep accusing me of being. Besides, even if there actually was any money left over, do you really think I would just waste it like that? And why would I let you just soak up all of my portion if I had it anyway? Did you actually think I would just leave it in our parents' account where you could dip into it whenever you felt like it? We're already in such a strange situation where you've ended up with some of the assets that I received after mom and dad passed. I can't believe this. I thought I could save money on some of the house expenses by covering it with my inheritance. I guess I'll have to start paying them with my own money. Go ahead and switch over the automatic payments to my account so that I can get my electricity and water back. And hurry up! I want them to turn back on today! Why do I need to do it for you? You aren't totally helpless. You can do it all on your phone anyway. I don't want to deal with all of your annoying problems. If you'd stop complaining and do it already, then you'd be finished a lot sooner. Have all of them turned back on as soon as possible. The gas, the electricity, and the water, all of it. Even if I did, it would just be a huge waste of my time anyway. There's no point. The house doesn't belong to us anymore. I guess I forgot to mention that. What are you talking about? What did you forget to mention now? When I was abruptly uprooted from my previous home, I went ahead and got in touch with a realtor to sell the property. So technically, you aren't going to be able to live there for much longer. You won't have to pay the utilities though. Lucky for you. You what? You sold my house? What were you thinking? I sold my house. It was mine after all. Just the other day, a buyer made the decision and the realtor has been going through the procedure for finishing the sale. I must have forgotten to tell you, but I think you should start looking for a new house as soon as possible. How could you do this? This is our parents' home. You went behind my back and made the decision to sell it without asking me what I thought about it? While I'm living here too? You're unbelievably selfish. You didn't get my permission for any of this. Why would I need your permission to sell the house? It was in my name. I don't need anyone's permission. You seem to keep forgetting that you didn't want to live in it to begin with. It was what I received when we divided our parents' assets. You didn't give it a second thought. It was mine, so whatever happened to the house was for me to decide. You may think that because you were born and raised in there, that it makes a bit of a difference. But it doesn't. You really don't have any right to that property, and now legally, neither of us do because it's been sold. How do you expect me to just pack up all of my things and leave? This is my house. Things have finally settled down and I've gotten comfortable living here. And now, you're telling me I don't even own the house? What a weird coincidence. That sounds so familiar. What goes around, comes around. I'm sure I said something very similar when you were telling me that I needed to move out. But maybe you forgot about that already too. <laughs> this just keeps getting better and better. Sorry to hear that there's a bit of an upset now that everything has settled down for you. It must be tough to get such bad news right after your utilities were turned off. Our situations are not the same. You did this to me. I have children too. My life is much more difficult than yours. You're gonna have my poor young children thrown out of their home. How could you treat your sister like this? And your nieces? You're inhumane. Are you seriously trying to make me out to be the bad guy? After how selfish and ungrateful you've been. You're actually calling me inhumane. When mom and dad were sick and needed our help, I called you time and time again for some help. It was of no consequence to you because you were too busy. Too busy for your own family. I never got any help. You never came to visit them. And you even had the nerve to skip coming to the funeral. 
the only thing that mattered to you was being able to get your hands on your precious inheritance and that was it. Then you took it upon yourself to claim more and more and try to take my home from me. You got what you wanted more or less. So do you want to take that back? Which one of us is actually more inhumane, Deborah? You need to take a look in the mirror. I don't want to lecture from you. I'm older than you and more experienced. What do you know about anything? You should show your older sister some more respect. I'm so tired of this arbitrary value that you place on being born earlier than me. It's getting really old. I'm ashamed to think that I'm related to someone like you. Trust me, the feeling is mutual. You need to withdraw the house from the market right now. Decline whatever offers they've made or cancel any paperwork that's been done. After you've fixed all of these problems, you can put the ownership of the house in my name. I don't think I want to do that. What exactly would I be getting out of this? Nothing. Why would I help you out anymore? You kicked me out of my house and didn't care where I ended up. It's too late to take anything back anyway. So, it looks like you're out of luck. Sorry. Then, as a consolation, you'd better give me your condo. I don't have a place to live now because of you. This is all your fault. I need somewhere my children and I can leave. I can be homeless. You claim to be doing so well for yourself so you can just find another place to live. Why do you think you can keep making all of these demands? Are you insane? My older sister is such a bully. <laughs> Why are you so mean to me? First, you try to take my home and make me fend for myself. Now you want to take my condo and force me out on the streets again. You're such a jerk. I'm starting to wonder who's the real slacker here. You keep making all of these demands and asking for handouts. I thought I was a lazy unemployed loser. Will you cut it out? This isn't a joke, I'm being serious. You've put me in a terrible situation. Oh yeah? You're being so serious right now, right? And here I was thinking all of this time that all of it was just a huge joke. Just like when we were kids and you'd always take my things. I thought you were just having a good old time with the house and now my condo. You really are totally nuts. <laughs> You've put me in such an awful situation that I need to do whatever I can. Whether you get me my house back or give me your condo, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care at this point. You make your choice, but you owe me. This is all because of you. Do you even care what happens to me? What about my children? Does it matter to you at all? Don't use your children as a shield. Are you really that useless that you can't figure out what to do next? I don't blame your children for anything you've done, but I made sure that they won't have to suffer because of your insufferable pride and incompetence. You took care of what? What did you do? I got in touch with your husband. He's on his way over there now, actually. Are you kidding me? Why? You went behind my back again. I can't believe you. How could you do this to me? You weren't honest with me when you told me about your divorce. You said it was over and done with, but that was all a lie. He told me that you took off with the kids because you didn't want him to divorce you. I also had no idea that this was all because you decided to be unfaithful in your marriage. I never would have thought you'd stoop so low, especially when you have children. My personal life doesn't have anything to do with you. I don't need to divulge every small detail to you just because you're my brother. What were you thinking when you called him? I told you, I felt bad for my nieces. They don't deserve to suffer because you're irresponsible. It's gonna be quite annoying for the new homeowner to find that someone else is still living in their house. And from the sound of it, your husband has been looking for you and his children for a while now. He's known that you and I don't get along very well. He said he never thought that you'd have gone back to our parents' house. It also goes without saying that he never thought that you'd have tried to kick me out of my house and settle in. I guess sometimes the answer is what you would least expected it to be. This is awful. Do you realize what you've done? Do you realize what he's going to do? He's going to divorce me and try to take my children from me. He's going to demand alimony and child support if he does that. That sounds pretty normal for a divorce, don't you think? After all, 
He has a right to see his children. You took them from him. This can't be happening. You have to let me stay at your place. Don't let him do this to me. Let me stay at your place. I definitely can't do that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want you anywhere near my new home. I don't need you causing me any more problems. You're just going to try and take what's mine again. I'd like to relax for once in my lifetime. Fine. I don't want your house anyway. I don't care. Just let me stay there for a little while. I promise I won't do it again, okay? I'm sorry. Forgive me already. I'm begging you to help me out. Please? I don't want any part of this, Deborah. I've washed my hands of this mess. I'll be taking a much more of a hands-off approach to things from now on. Anyway, good luck with everything, sis. You can't bail on me like this. I'm your sister. We're family, Lewis. After I stopped talking to Deborah, she hurried to try and leave the house with her children before her husband arrived. Unfortunately for her, he arrived not long after and brought Deborah and her children with him back to their home to discuss things. They finally got a divorce with the assistance of a lawyer. Deborah was forced to pay thousands of dollars in expenses and alimony. She was left with very little after the divorce and still had to move out of the home since the sale was final. As expected, she also lost custody of her children. Her only option was to move in with the man she had been seeing on the side that had caused all of her marital issues. She struggled with all of the pavements and the stress led to more and more fights between her and her boyfriend. Their fighting didn't stop and it seems like he kicked her out of the house. For someone so greedy that constantly tried to take things from other people, it's a fitting punishment. Hopefully it serves as a wake up call for her. I feel that I made the right decision in selling my parents home. I had many memories in that home and some days it was very difficult to live there on my own. When the opportunity presented itself to sell the home, I felt that it was the right time to do what I did. The house was way too big for one person to live in anyway, and it was a lot to handle on my own. It's reassuring to know that another family will be able to raise children there and make their own memories. I used some of the money to help maintain my parents' grave and I've been bringing flowers every so often. I hope they can forgive me for selling their home and think that I made the right decision too.